looking out for Lyme disease. Eight years ago, Maureen McShane was bitten by a tick in the garden of her cottage in the Laurentian Mountains. She was living in Montreal and practicing family medicine in upstate New York at the time. And she didn't think much of it until about two weeks later when she started to feel sick. For the next 10 months, she endured what she calls a living nightmare of pain, sickness, and misdiagnosis. Eventually, she learned she had Lyme disease. You get it by being bitten by an infected tick. It can mimic any number of other ailments from malaria to neurological disorders, and that makes it hard to diagnose. And the longer it goes undiagnosed, the more dangerous and even life-threatening it can become. Today, Dr. McShane has recovered, and she now dedicates her medical practice to treating Lyme disease. She's in Montreal. Good morning. Good morning. Can you briefly explain what Lyme disease is? Well, Lyme disease is an infection um, that's passed on usually by the bite of a tick, Um, and this infection can be... um, chronic and cause all kinds of chronic symptoms. Recurrent headaches, neck pain, back pain, flu symptoms on and off. Pain that will go from joint to joint, so maybe one day the person's knee will hurt, the next day it will be a hip or foot, shoulder. Um, uh, As well, there's a lot of other symptoms that go along with that um, constellation that covers every single system. Gastrointestinal, um, uh, neurological, a lot of uh, paresthesias. Um, There's a misdiagnosis sometimes of uh, multiple sclerosis and these people can have Lyme disease causing the same symptoms um, as well with Parkinson's or fibromyalgia, but actually it is is caused from chronic Lyme disease. Mm. Now, you describe living through a 10-month living nightmare. What do you mean? What happened to you? Well, what happened was that I did not know that there were ticks in Canada, and I was gardening in St. Dona, and I had something on the back of my leg that was tinier than a poppy seed. I pulled it off, and it dropped. I didn't know what it was, and I didn't think anything more about it. About two weeks later, I got flu symptoms with shaking chills, no fever, but severe headache and neck pain, ached all over, couldn't even think, could barely talk, um, shook all night, felt awful. Um, there was not a part of me that didn't hurt. And I went to to a series of, of doctors... I saw initially an infectious disease doctor in the emergency room, a neurologist. A little bit later on, I saw a rheumatologist. I ended up having an MRI um, of not only brain but spinal cord at a great cost to the healthcare system here. And nothing was uh, diagnosed at all. In fact, with the acute illness, I was told that uh, with the sweats I was having, maybe it was menopause. Um, so Really? Yes, yes. And, you know, it, it's, it's quite... Um, but you were feeling fluy as well, right? You I was flu feeling symptoms. fluy. I was very, very ill at that time. I, I lost eight pounds. I was having problems swallowing. My balance was off. I had cognitive problems from the very beginning. Like and what? what? Um, problems initially with just being able to talk about things. It was like going through a fog and trying to put words together. And over the next 10 months, what happened was I lost all my short-term memory. I was asking my patients the same question three times in a row and writing it down three times in a row. I thought I had Alzheimer's. So you went from being healthy and fit uh, to like two weeks later, all of this stuff hitting you? Yes, it all hit me. And the problem was that at that time, I, th- I thought about Lyme disease, um, but I was told that there was not Lyme disease in Canada, there were no ticks, um, and beside that, the testing was not good enough for it. So, I mean, there were a lot of different things that I was told over a period of about a month and a half. Um, I looked so this at, went on like unknown. You didn't know for I a month and a half, and you're I, trying to be a doctor and, and I didn't treat others? Know. I didn't know. And I'm a board-certified family practice doctor in the U.S., so I search their literature as well. And in their literature, they may talk about acute Lyme disease, but they don't talk about the fact that when you are bitten, aside from the Lyme bacteria, about 50% of the time, there are other infections that are transmitted. So I couldn't figure out why I was having sweats and chills. 
But what I had was also with the Lyme something called Babesia, which is a form of malaria. So how were you finally diagnosed? Well, finally, what happened was I had a patient I saw in um, the Chasey, New York office when I was working there who, who had a constellation of symptoms about three years before that. And as I got sicker, he came into the office and he was looking great. I had referred him to a Lyme doctor in uh, New York State, and he was put on a lot of antibiotics. Now, at that time, I thought that was awful. He had several antibiotics at the same time. However, I developed a lot of the symptoms that he had had. So he was in my office, and he said how great he was feeling after two, maybe two and a half years of antibiotics, and I was feeling awful. I got his doctor's phone number from his chart. Mm, so he, he went uh, and was diagnosed with Lyme disease. So you went to the same doctor, and that's where you got the diagnosis? Yes, and not only that, but... As a doctor, you're trained to always wait for test results to be positive before you even treat a patient. The doctor that I saw listened to my symptoms, and he said, you have Lyme disease and babesiosis. He said, I'm going to give you these medications. And he gave me prescriptions, and I said, but aren't we going to wait for the test results? And he said, no, it should be treated on a clinical basis because the test can miss it. Uh, if people have the symptoms, you treat them first and see how they do. Mm. So what was the treatment for you? Well, the treatment for me was multiple antibiotics at the same time over the course of two years. And... Um, Initially, I had a 30% improvement within a matter of two months. It was, it was just amazing. It was like lifting this black cloud. Um, I could start thinking again. My speech was clearer. Stuttering was almost gone. I had been choking when I swallowed, and that went away. Um, the pain um, it was just incredible. I've had five fractures, and none of them hurt, like the pain that I had from Lyme disease. You can't even describe it, the pain. It's a pain in your bones? It's a pain in the bones. It's a pain in the muscles. Sometimes the joint pain would feel so bad I felt like I'd be shot in a joint, like somebody just took a bullet and just shot me, you know, a gun and just shot me. And then 10 minutes later, it would be totally gone. And you know, for a long time, I just thought, I must be nutty. This is, this is like nothing I've ever seen, you know, before in a patient. Or maybe I just wasn't listening to how people were describing their pain. When you first were put on an extensive... Um regimen of antibiotics, what did you think? Oh, I thought it was awful. It took me three days before I could start the antibiotics, and here I am a doctor. Every day I'd put them in front of me, and I'd say, I just can't do this. This is just too strange. And, and of course, they did work. You got, oh, rid of this, you got rid of Lyme disease. Yes. So you went from a patient with Lyme disease to a doctor who specializes in treating patients with Lyme disease. How, how did that happen? What, what happened initially was that I noticed in my office that there were some patients that had the exact same symptoms that I did. And, you know, in particular, you have to be very careful. Summertime flu is a big giveaway. Not everybody will have a bullseye rash. Um, not everybody will see a tick. But a summertime flu with persistence of symptoms, and I had patients like that, and I treated them, and their symptoms went away. So when you, a bullseye rash, what, well, explain, please. A bullseye rash is a, uh, usually it's a circular type of rash. It doesn't have to be a perfect circle, but, but what it is is concentric circles, and sometimes it will have central clearing and sometimes not. It's known in medical terms as an erythema migrans rash. Now, this rash can also look like big splotchy hives. It doesn't have to be just one area. But, but that's the classic of Lyme, and when somebody has that, that is acute Lyme. They should be treated just based on seeing that rash. There should be no waiting for blood tests, not even doing blood tests, just treating them. Okay, and so, but as you point out, you don't always have that, so... No, that's the problem. Okay, so how often do you see patients who have gone through a similar experience of misdiagnosis or no diagnosis of this inexplicable set of illnesses? I'm seeing, my, my practice is now all Lyme because people started finding out that I treated Lyme disease and before I knew it, my job in a walk-in clinic was no longer working. So I was seeing patients on the side and then I opened up my own practice in January of 2009. So I'm really dedicated to treating chronic Lyme disease and I'm seeing it all the time. Most of my practice is Canadian and they are coming down with nightmares of stories. Um, some of them have been seen by over 12 specialists in Canada. Some of them have had, you know, 
three MRIs of the brain. They have had CAT scans. They've had these extensive workups. This is costing the healthcare system billions of dollars, and these people cannot work. They are so ill, they can barely do anything. They're saddled with diagnoses like fibromyalgia or some kind of chronic illness or multiple sclerosis. But the problem is that no one is looking into Lyme disease, and the testing system here is awful. Okay, so when you say um, acute versus chronic, what's the difference? Well, acute Lyme disease is, say say you're out and you're hiking, and the next day um, you find a little tick and you pull it off, and a few days later to a week later you develop flu-type symptoms. That's acute Lyme. But the Lyme bacteria is so smart and it really likes to be in nerve tissue. Within 72 hours, it's in brain, it's all over the body. So what you want to do is you want to treat right away you know, within a matter of days from getting this. If you wait for 10 months, like for me, it was two years of antibiotics. So it's, then it becomes chronic. It becomes chronic. So what happens if they don't catch it at all? What if you hadn't caught it at 10 months? Well, I was heading at 10 months, I was barely able to practice medicine anymore. And the pain was so immense that it was very difficult to drive to work. And then Lyme can cause a lot of stiffness. I was having such problems getting out of the car in the parking lot that I don't think I would have been able to practice more than two more months. I would have been on disability. Can it kill you? Yes, it can kill you. So why do you think it's so difficult to get an accurate diagnosis? Well, the the testing is is really a big problem. Um, in Canada, they're doing a two tiered test. So say you think that you have Lyme disease. First off, your your doctor, your your general practitioner, is not going to do the test. They refer you to an infectious disease doctor. The infectious disease doctor does a test called an ELISA test, but the ELISA test misses up to seventy percent of the cases of Lyme disease. If it is not positive, they don't go on testing any further. The definitive test is the Western blot, which is a different type of test. It, it takes a little bit more technology to do it and to interpret it. It's it, more expensive, in other words. It's, it's more expensive, in other words. And even with that, it's only testing for so many subspecies of this, this Borrelia burgdorferi bacteria. There's different forms of Borrelia, Borrelia burgdorferi being one, but there's other forms. And if they're not checking for the form you have on it, you can be negative even on the Western blot but still have the illness, or you can be so sick with it that your immune system is no longer forming the antibodies that we're looking for. So how would you describe how seriously the provincial and federal public health agencies are addressing Lyme disease? They are becoming more aware of it, but I don't think they understand exactly how serious it is. What the cost is to the health care system is astronomical. Primary care doctors should be able to order the test. The ELISA test should be banned. It is worthless. Um, you know, if there's a false negative rate in a test, why would you do it on people that, you know, you can ruin their whole lives by missing this illness? Let's get back to the actual um, disease itself. It, it, the, the tick, you said, is about the size of a poppy seed? Yes. What I pulled off the back of my leg was smaller than a poppy seed. So what you really need to do is... You need to protect yourself first off of anything from this conversation today. People need to be very aware that it's in Canada. How, well, how do you protect yourself you in wear, the summer? Well, the, that's the big problem. In the summer, if you're going out into areas where you know there's Lyme disease or if you're camping, what you need to do is wear long slacks. Tuck your, your slacks in, light-colored slacks. You can spray them with permethrin. You can use DEET for it as well. You have to be careful with DEET with young children. With your children, you should be checking them, and you should be checking them every day. You should check every nook and cranny on their body. You should check their hair as if you're checking for head lice. You should check behind their ears, inside their ears. You need to be looking, and you need to be looking for something that's very, very small. And it's not prevalent that you'd have to do that every day? Yes, it is that prevalent. Now imagine you and, know, and is that in in certain parts of the country that that you're seeing that increase in Quebec? Huge, or, oh, like, huge in Quebec and huge in Ontario. The West, I'm seeing some, but I think that a lot of the West are going um, south of the border. So, what do you say to critics who suggest that that? By talking about this the way you talk about it, you are creating an unnecessary panic that Lyme disease does exist in Canada, but it is rare. What I say is this. I would give anything, 
if somebody had spoken to me about this and I didn't have to go through two years of what I went through. The, the illness, I can't quite explain to you what it's like, but you, you almost lose everything. You know, when you lose your health, you lose energy, you hurt all over, you can't think. It's horrible. People should know about that and they should know how to prevent it. And every single area, they should be testing these ticks for Lyme disease more than they are. It should be public knowledge. Forget this about recreational areas and wanting tourists. You really, you really need to be candid with everybody. And you're saying if it's caught quickly, it can be, it can be cured absolutely, rapidly. absolutely. Okay, Maureen McShane, thank you for speaking with me. You're welcome. Thank you. Maureen McShane is a doctor who specializes in treating patients with Lyme disease. She practices in Plattsburgh, New York, and she lives in Montreal.